viewer i hope you are doing well welcome to the sitix net scalar adc uh, lectures in series so what we are going to do today is uh, we are going to create a lab and uh, doing it configuration so uh, the main purpose is today we are going to learn how we can configure a sitix net scalar adc and uh, for that uh, i'm going to configure one arm mode like that we have discussed in the uh, past lecture let me show you uh, we move to the our, uh, yes so we are going to configure one arm mode like our uh, uh, these are our users and uh, our virtual ips and sn ips are on same subnet mean on same vlan and nsip and we have a switch connected and we have two servers so let me create on the my side what i we going to do is Uh, let's suppose I have a switch and uh, here is my switch and here I have two server with the web servers uh, ac uh, services are activated on that I mean the first server is uh, uh, the IP of first server is 150.1.1 .1 7.10 and the second server ip is 150.1.7.20 and uh, i have also the load balancer min and that scalar is attached there see tricks and uh, its ip is its uh, management ip min and ip is 150.1.7. 250 if you want to learn how can we install that netscaler adc into a vmware you can watch my previous video so it's very helpful for all that users and uh, i have a sn ip which is 150.1.7.50 and I also have virtual IP because the user can access the virtual IP. And the virtual IP is 150.1.7.100. It's my virtual IP. So what I'm going to do, and my users are connected here. So when user access that virtual IP, they can move to the subnet IP and subnet IP transfer their traffic to the servers. And they can, can and CTX net the ADC load balance the traffic to these two services. So these are our actual lab that we're going to perform. So let's move to the configurations. I have installed Windows servers and I have also installed the NAS scalers. So here is it. I have Windows Server installed. I have one for uh, Windows Server 2016 and the other one is Windows Server 2019. And I have Citrix ADC is installed there. So let me power on these devices. I power on the Citrix ADC. I power on the Windows Server 2019. And I power on the Windows Server 2016. So I'm going to load balance these two service traffics. So the first server is on. And the second server is also on. Let me enter it IP. So here it comes, and uh, let me show you these their IPs CMD 
and if I can IP config I have set the manually set the server IP to 150.1.7.10 as shown in our topology so let me ping to my gateway which is 150.1.7.1 and hit enter so the gateway is ping able and uh, now I move to my second server from here I ping the gateway first of all let me show you the IP IP config and this IP is 150.1.7.20 so let me ping it one ping 150.1.7.1 I ping the gateway so the gateway is pingable that's awesome Low, now I ping server to the first server 150.1.7.10 the IP is first server is 10 so the first server is also pingable now I move to the my Citrix ADC so it's asked for the login I enter my credentials so the done it's login no so let me do one thing that how we can configure the web servers so you just have to click on add roles and features and uh, just next 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 and then from here you have to click this web server IIS so when you click on the web server IIS and click next it can install the web servers features so uh, just you have to do is what is next 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 there's nothing to worry about that also done in the server 2019 and after the installation what you need to have you need to access that so let me access that 150.1.7.20 hat enter and my 20 server is working correctly and when i enter 150.1.7.10 so it's also working correctly so my two server is working very perfectly and uh, when i click on 150.1.7.100 that's my virtual ip and then hit enter there is no services running on it because i have no configured state uh, still so what we are going to do we can load balance 150.1.7.20 and 150.1.7.10 to 150.1.7.100 so let open the load balancer enter the ip which is my case in 150.1.7.250 hit enter and this is my load balancer and uh, it type is it credentials and hit enter and then i click update so it's open what i have to do is continue so this is the dashboard uh, basically this is the system configuration from where i can configure my load balancer no uh, only the one ip is configured that is nsip which is my management ip for this net scaler from which is 150.1.7.255 by using i am accessing this uh, graphical user interface so what you have to do is first of all you need to create servers I mean you add you have to integrate your servers with the servers with the citrix adc so what you have to do is you need to move to the traffic management from here and from the traffic management you move to the load balancing and from the load balancing you have to go to the servers here is it click on it and hit add so the name you need to enter name so i enter here that server 1 and enter the ip address of that server min 150.1.7.10 is the ip address in my case and uh, just don't need to do anything you need to create that so the server one is created now you have to add server two so the server two and at server two ip is dot 20 and create so both the server are shown here and uh, state should be enabled which is looking and uh, note that enable green means from that scalar it's enable but whether it is listening to port working or not we'll know after creating service group so what we have to do is 
we need to create a service group so let move to the service group here is service group click on it and when you click on it what we need to do we need to add and uh, what i am going to do i am going to enable the http services so i write here http and uh, protocol type is also http and uh, if you need uh, uh, everything is okay so click okay so here is no service group member is added what we have to do is click on that and server base, I click on the server. I mean, I am going to integrate the servers that I have added recently to the service group. So then I click on the select services and I have these two server one and server two. So I'm going to click on that and select. And when I select it, what we next we have to do is I need to add port mean the port for http services the port we use is 80 so i add here 80 and then i click create and when it created select ok so here is my service group but the effective state is down but next i am going to do i am going to create on a monitor because i have to i want that the monitoring service is enabled so on the monitor when i click on the monitor so here is a no service group to monitor is binding. So let me bind that. Click on the state. So these are what you want to be ping, which want to bind, you want to bind what you which service you want to monitor. So you want to monitor HTTP traffic, you want to monitor TCP traffic. So here is the different parameter what you want to monitor. So we have different options. So I think we monitor on the TCP settings. So select TCP, and uh, from here I click on the select button. I'm thinking to select the HTTP, but let's click the TCP. TCP, and then I click on bind. So here is this is bind. Now the next step is click done. When I click on done, the effective state is already done. Now why it's done? Because we have don't configure the SNIP, the subnet IP for that service. So that's why it show us the down states. So what we can do, we move to the systems. And from the system, we go to the network. And from the network, you go to the IPs. And uh, from here, we have only IP which is a NetScaler IP. What I am going to do, I am going to do add and add the IP address of 150.1.7. In our topology, our subnet IP is NSIP 150.1.7. Uh, these are this is a uh, 50. So let me type here the 50. Net mask in my case is 255.255.255.0 and uh, here I type subnet IP and uh, don't need to add anything else just click on create and it's created now let's move back to the our load balancer traffic management and from the traffic management but we are going to have to service group and now see it's up and uh, enabled and up in the meanwhile it was down because where it's down because i have don't configure a subnet ip no it's up it's showing up when i click on up sorry let me close it and when i click on up it show me that these two servers are selected server one and server two and uh, it also performed the tcp handshake with that mean up this is Success mean when I click on refresh, it can also mean everything is working fine. So the next step is we have to create a virtual IP for the load balancer. This is the important part. Now click on the virtual services under load balancer. 
there is a virtual services and click add provide the name mean uh, i'm going to provide uh, it's uh, is my virtual ip and i will add here uh, providing a virtual ip let me add this for which purpose it's a virtual ip for http I mean i'm going to provide http now the ip address for the virtual ip is 150.1.7.100 and the port is 80 so if you want to configure the ssl uh, mean uh, you want to configure the ssl protocol from here you can select the ssl but i am configuring it with the simple http so what you have to click on when you this you have to click ok look at the load uh, he is saying that the feature load, uh, load balancing is disabled do you want to enable it i say yes no it's also state is down where it's down it's asking me to bind the service group so let me click on the service group and click on the sorry not on add i need to select because i already have created so let me select this and bind this so the service group is bind no uh, click continue for the further step No, these are showing me the uh, uh, that I have done already things. So if you want to have, if you, if I had here SSL certi SSL things, then I have to need to have uh, select the SSL certificate from that. But this time I know have added. If you like to disable uh, from this uh, uh, things or other weak protocol, it can be done as shown in the program. Ignore this if not required and click uh, done. I mean from this you can configure all that things so what i have do is here is my virtual ip is created so it's also a pan effective status up so what we can do no my all the configuration is done perfectly now i come back to this my page and i click on 150.1.7. Hundred, which is my load balancer virtual IP and hit enter so here is I think you get my point and we have configured the labs so if you want to save the settings come back to the load balancer and click on this so by clicking this you can save your configurations so these are the basic lab for for one num mode mean uh, we, we have a virtual IP and our SN IP is on the same that is VLAN 1 so if you want to create VLAN, you have to move to the systems and from the system you can move to the network and from the network you have the option for the VLAN. So here is my VLAN around 1, all the interfaces are on 1 in VLAN. And if you come to the IPs, so I have my Netscaler IP, my virtual IP and my subnets IP that I have created all and all are enabled and all are working perfectly because we have also accessed that IP from here let's see so i hope you get my point and you have understand all that queries if you have any question feel free to comment to uh, give me a feedback on my email that i have mentioned there and if you like if you really enjoy it then don't forget to like subscribe and share thank you take care